bit of admin before we get started. We have to download this Firebase uh, admin SDK service account credentials. You go into your settings here, project settings, go into service accounts, and then go, go, and then generate new private key and it will download a file. Copy it into your root directory here, and then add it into the app.yaml under this Firebase config file. This, we'll use this later to authenticate so we can access Firebase from our Go app. But first we need to flash out our gin endpoints. So we need to import gin. And then set up the default. Synchronize the dependencies. And let's define a basic get route. I'm going to just keep overwriting the same version because it's going to be more convenient, but usually you would increment your versions. Or we could even set that up as a feature if we don't provide the, the version. Let's do that. That's, that's not a bad idea. So if the version is empty, So we've got the old version, we've got the prefix, we've got the latest, and then we bump it. So then we put it all together. Interestingly, it didn't take the last version and that's probably because we have this hide no traffic flag in here. So let's actually cancel that and run that again without that flag. And you can see it's now using version nine, which is probably what we want. And hopefully our latest version will contain this path. Obviously this will actually conflict with what we've defined within the handler here. So that's gonna be a problem. So let's put something else in there. Maybe let's call it, I'm just gonna call it V1. It's a good idea to version your APIs. So we'll do this one as V1. Now we could go through and for every route, uh, go v1, let's say delete, v1, blah, blah, blah. There's an easier way to do it with Jin. So you create a group. So we'll call it versioned r doc group. Then we put in the relative path here. So if we just version it here, we call it v1. And then rather than using r, we use versioned there. And I'll just get rid of that there. And I probably don't need that trailing slash there. So if we query the API at v1, we should get a response back success. So let's just grab that here. Slash v1. Excellent. So we have to set up our app to actually run. So let's try run that again. Now that's not working at the moment, but let's, let's check out why that's not working. Should be incrementing out to 11, but. Okay, thanks to some pine soul in the internet, I can see that we can sort our result here and then we can hit it rather than tail it. So let's run that and then go hit minus n1. Uh, the problem obviously being that how how this is processed when it's sorted is it first processes that that value here which is one and then three four and then it processes the zero it doesn't actually recognize that as a 10 it's just handling it as column by column so that's why we got that result so if we try that again hopefully it increments properly now so i was only handling one character there so we actually needed to handle more than one
And there we have it. Our V1 group is now displaying success. We're going to very quickly flesh out a get, create, and delete route for Firestore and Datastore mode. So this is a NoSQL database offered by GCP. It's very useful for things like inventories or user profiles and things like that. For the purpose of this video, we'll just use the examples provided by Google for Go. Uh, it'll make things a bit easier. You can just copy paste from the data store docs. So create an internal directory. So this is a good best practice for storing uh, private files. And then within that, we'll create a subfolder called ds for data store and then a ds.go file. I'll copy paste from the data store docs and put them in functions called create entity, get entity and delete entity. Other than that, there's not a lot going on here, just refactoring to make sure it all compiles. Uh, beauty of Goland does all the work for you. You can use the errors from github.com slash package slash errors uh, to wrap your error responses. So this is a good way of labeling them so you get a bit more information. You don't have to do format.sprintf and do all that crap to put a put a, an extra label onto your errors. So it's quite nice. To start using the client we define it using ds.createClient and then we return the result and make sure we handle the error. And then we can start to use it within the routes themselves by using like for example this get route we're going to use ds.getEntity and then pass the context so we'll just pass the background context and then we will hand it the client. So to quickly handle our error here from the create entity response, we want to return a JSON. We want to use the, the gen context and go dot JSON. And then we pass the HTTP error code. In this case, it's going to be probably internal server error. And then we use the gen dot H payload -y helper thing to help us create a, a JSON payload. Uh, the actual structure of this payload is up to you, but it's a good practice to provide the code and the message. So in order to expedite the testing process, we're going to build the Go app locally using go run cmd uh, main. And one of the things you'll notice is that it's trying to connect to data store when we create this client. We need to use the data store emulator, so you need to install that. First, you need the Java JRE version 8 or greater. You can uh, see more info at this link here. And you need the SDK, so you need to probably update your components list first and then install the emulator. I've already got it. And then you can run the emulator probably best in another tab, like this. Uh, this flag, no store on disk. 
This is good for testing if you don't want to save it to file and persist across sessions. Once we do that, we run that. You can see it starts up and then it should give you a port and that should run. So there we go, 8081. And then when we run, we set the data store emulator host to this. And then we set the project and then we run. Okay, so a few enters and then let's try Curl uh, v1 code 500 message failed to create data store ent entity 500 beautiful we'll quickly rummage up a couple of scripts here i do this often just for memory's sake i always forget this kind of stuff so either put it in a readme or better yet just put it in a script and then you can execute it from the command line and you never have to remember it again downside is you never remember it again So that last execution failed because our project ID has just been copied over from Google. So obviously it doesn't have the proper project ID. So here we're going to use the operating system get env command to get the Google Cloud project. Uh, this is a environment variable that's provided by App Engine. So we need to pass it in during our testing scripts, uh, but it will be provided by default by App Engine. So if you run all your scripts, uh, make sure you start the data store emulator as well and you run your, your main app and then you curl it you should get a result quickly update that response to use the ID, so the key.id and key.name, and so we can actually see the value of the thing that we created. And your when you test it again, you should get a few more rational results. So at this point, the create's working, so let's finish up the get and delete. Make sure we handle the errors, make sure we pass a good result, something that we can actually use. Up until this point, we've been using uh, data store dot name key. So that's when you name your data store entry. Let's say we had people's names. Um, it's not a very reliable way to, to create an entry unique key. So it's better to use ID unless you're generating your own UIDs or something like that. So let's change this to data store dot get ID and then we'll provide an ID which will be an end 64. This n64 will get will provide within the path parameter. So with Jin, you can add a path parameter by going slash, and then for example, it might be like semicolon ID, and then you can extract it using c dot param. This returns a string, so we need to use a to i, which is ASCII to integer. So that's from the string conv package. So in this case, if that string conversion doesn't work, then it's probably a bad parameter, so bad request. Because we're expecting an integer in this case. So try it with some string first to see if it successfully fails. And then let's try with a number. So you can see here we got our entry from our database by using one. And then we should be able to get two, three. They look like the same entry because uh, within the database helper, we actually don't change the, the details, but you get the idea. So it's not very useful to create the same task every single time. 
So let's add the task to the post body. A bit of a rabbit hole in this one was the data store entity, or in this case, task, needed to be a pointer. So it kept complaining that the the entity type was invalid. So you can see here the data store invalid entity type. Kind of led me down a little rabbit hole. I went I went to see Alice in Wonderland. So you can see when we use the ID of seventeen at the end here with the get route, we get the object correctly returned. Now let's try and delete that object. And the reason that's happening is that uh, we haven't set up the path parameter here with delete. Now, if we delete, we should see a success, and we do, and then when we get a second time, it doesn't exist. So, perfect. Done.